In his book, Arctic Dreams, Barry Lopez talks about spending time up in the far north of Alaska with the native Alaskans. And there's a quality about them that he found hard to describe in English. He said it was partly fear and partly alertness, and a very strong sense of where they were and what possible dangers might happen. And yet they lived with us, whether he said, a joy, a sense of humor and a sense of joy. In other words, they lived with their fears without being overwhelmed by them. Now, those of us with a background in the Dharma recognize this quality as heedfulness. The realization that they're dangerous, but also something can be done about them. And so you learn the skills that can handle them. And at the same time, you have to be very alert. You have to be prepared. So meditation is partly a preparation for the dangers of daily life. Because the most dangerous people out there are the ones who are not prepared. The ones who live with a false sense of security, things are going along okay, and all of a sudden something happens. And they thrash around, they feel like they've been violated, and they can get very unreasonable and do very stupid things. One of the problems of our society is we have a very strong sense of security, or we had one, and then when it was taken away, we're just kind of thrashing around. We don't have to think about political insecurity, just plain old natural insecurity. Back when the big hurricane hit New Orleans, there were a lot of people saying, those stupid people in New Orleans are living in a place like that. Of course, hurricanes are going to come and get them. And so someone drew a cartoon in which someone from California is talking about how stupid the people in New Orleans are to live in such a dangerous place. And in the window behind the person, you see these wildfires ranging. And then someone up in Seattle is saying, how stupid is that people live in California with all those wildfires and there's a volcano about to erupt. The people in the Midwest are saying those people in Seattle are pretty dumb, where they have volcanoes. Why should you live there? And of course, there are tornadoes visible in the background. In other words, everywhere you live, there's going to be danger. When I was down in Brazil, we are talking about having a very vivid sense that death could come at any time. And I mentioned that when you're in California, we could always pull out the, the potential for a large earthquake. I said, what would you use in Brazil? And in one voice, everyone in the room, this is a hundred people, said, robbers. So we all have our dangers. And so the wise thing is, like the native Alaskans, is to be prepared. So when you're meditating, it's good to find a spot in the body that's your spot, that you can, with some confidence, go to that spot know that you can manage to breathe in a way that makes that spot feel good. And try to keep it at a place that is especially sensitive so that when that spot feels good, then it can spread to other parts of the body. And don't leave it. All too often when we get up from meditation, it's like we're holding something in our lap, and as soon as we get up it has to fall out of the lap. Remember, we're holding this in our memory, we're holding this in our awareness. And our awareness is still there as we get up. The problem is we tend to forget about the meditation, think about what we're going to do next. And so the skill that we've developed gets tossed away. And then something drastic or dramatic happens. We remember, oh, I've got to have this skill. And But you haven't maintained what you picked up in the meditation. So. This is a good practice. Find the spot inside that is your spot, the place where you can go. If you're not sure of where your spot might be, you can start out with some of those bases for the breath that John Lee talks about. The middle of the head, the palate, base of the throat, the tip of the sternum, the point just above the navel. Those are just something to begin with. There are other spots in there as well. It's just simply a question of exploring and finding where is your sensitive spot, the place where you can fairly be confident that 
when you go there, it's going to feel good. And you can maintain it so it feels better. And then make a habit. When you get up from meditation, you maintain that awareness of that spot in your body. It doesn't have to be the whole body, just that one spot. John Lee's image is of a piece of cloth that you can hold in your fist, but then spread out to a couple of meters when you need to. In other words, you can have that one spot that's comfortable, and then when you have a need to spread that sense of comfort around the body, it goes. And then do your best through the course of the day to keep that spot in mind so that you will have something good to fall back on when you're suddenly confronted with a difficult situation. In terms of the path, this is, comes under right effort, trying to prevent unskillful states from arising. You don't wait for them to arise and then scramble around, try to stop them, and, but that's the way most people live their lives. But as meditators, we should have some heedfulness. We should be prepared. The old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Because it's when you're prepared that you're more likely to do something that's actually skillful. To have a sense of well-being and create a frame of mind. that's sensitive to situations, so you can sense when something is about to get bad, and before it's gotten bad, you've already got your defenses in place. You don't want to drift around careless and heedless, and then suddenly get confronted with something dangerous and have to scramble around. Because as the Buddha said, heedfulness is the basis for all skillful qualities. Not just concentration, your compassion, your wisdom, all the good qualities we're trying to develop in the path, your ability to be generous. All these things come from heedfulness, realizing that there are dangers, but there are ways of avoiding those dangers. We're not going to be totally free of danger until nirvana, but in the meantime, we can help protect ourselves, and in protecting ourselves, we protect others, because we don't go thrashing around. So keep in mind the sense that the world is a dangerous place, but learn how not to be overwhelmed by that sense of danger. Take it in a matter-of-fact way. And be prepared. As I said, the meditation is the preparation. And you want to learn how to not simply leave it when you, when you get up. The skills we're doing here, the skills we're mastering here as we sit with our eyes closed, are meant to be used in daily life. Because it's not only here, say, that defilements may come up, or sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair in the terms of the text. These things can happen at any time, and you want to be prepared at any time. So cultivate the sense that you you have the skills here, and just don't leave them. It's one of the things I was struck with the John Fuang. We, he was a very wary person in a lot of ways. When you got to know him, it took him quite a while before he would open up to you. He wanted to get a sense of you first. And you think of all the forest at John's. They had to be very wary. They're going out in the forest, into the jungle. It's a dangerous place. And if you know the dangers, okay, you're prepared. It's not that overwhelming. You don't expose yourself to anything unnecessary. It's like living in Thailand. If you're going to sit outside in the evening, you have to have a mosquito net. And we just take that as part of life. And you do all the things that you need to do in order to protect yourself from the foreseeable dangers, and develop your alertness so you can be ready for the ones that you don't foresee. 
but you take the dangers in stride. And you learn how to be familiar with them as well. Before I went to Thailand, I never had much encounter, <clears throat> much experience with snakes. And so when I first ran across them, the cobras living right near where I was, it was, it was disconcerting. But then I learned a few basic facts about cobras. One important one is that if you don't move, they don't see you. And as John Fruing said, learn to have some goodwill and some compassion on those poor snakes. They have to go around in their bellies all the time. They don't have any arms or legs. So no wonder they're in a bad mood. And so you will learn to observe them and learn to have some compassion for them. You begin to get a sense of what made them tick. And when you could figure that out, then you could live with them and not be so afraid. You knew what you had to be wary about, but you you didn't overstep those bounds. But they were no longer the great unknown. I eventually became the person that people went to to get the cobras out of the kitchen. So in the same way, when you have a sense of your own ability to observe, and you've got your sense of strength inside, and you can start learning how to try to figure out what makes the other people around you tick. You find that they're not so fearsome, and you can start handling them with more skill. As I said, all this comes under that principle, trying to prevent unskillful qualities from arising. All too often we're told that meditation is simply a matter of being with whatever comes up in the present and being open to the present. Well, there's danger in the present, danger outside, danger inside. I can't find any place in the canon where the Buddha says, be open. But he does say, think about the future. Your actions will have consequences. What you're doing now will have consequences on into the future. So you think about both. You pay attention to what you're doing now, but you also think about the long-term consequences. And when you say that in the future there are potential dangers, okay, you prepare for them. And how do you prepare for them now? Getting to know your breath really well, getting to know you your sense of the body. The breath energy is in the body, and what John Lee calls the resting spots of the breath. And using that knowledge, you can be prepared. <laughs>